Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Azure Every Day, where today we're going to talk about um, some of the key terminology in Azure Databricks. Uh, so we've done a couple of uh, short videos on Databricks and, and sort of what it is. Uh, just as a reminder, it's a managed platform for running Apache Spark jobs, right? So being managed, it means that you don't have to worry about managing the cluster or running performance maintenance uh, on the cluster in order to use Spark like you would if you were going to deploy a full HD Insight Spark cluster, okay? It provides a user interface for uh, data scientists and data analysts, uh, making it simpler to operate when you're building your models, but it provides a pretty powerful API that allows for some automation as well. Um, it also gives you the ability to run role-based access control with Active Directory uh, for tighter user integration at a more granular scale. And it also gives you the ability to uh, pause and start uh, resources on demand. Uh, the nice part about this is you don't have to tear down an HD Insight cluster in order to use Spark jobs. You can just pause your resources uh, and scale up and scale out as needed automatically. Um, so when we talk about Databricks, uh, we've got some key terms, uh, workspaces, notebooks, libraries, tables, clusters, jobs, and apps. And I'll go through these kind of quickly, um, but it should give you somewhat of an overview of the different uh, uh, sort of points that you're going to use, uh, you know, when you're running Databricks jobs, right? So workspace is um, really, it's sort of that central place that allows you to organize all the work that's being done, right? Think of it as kind of like a folder structure. It allows you to save notebooks and libraries um, that you want to operate on and manipulate data with, right? Then you can share them to other users securely, okay? Shouldn't really store data in these. Really, they're, they're designed just for the, the notebooks and libraries. Um, data should be stored in the data storage, right? Um, now, notebooks are a set of any number of cells that allow you to execute commands with a programming language, uh, Scala, Python, R, SQL, or Markdown, right? And you can specify that programming language when you open a cell at the top of the notebook, right? Uh, you can create a dashboard that allows the output of the code uh, to be shared as opposed to having to see the code. You can just see the output of what you ran in the background. Um, and they can also be scheduled as jobs for things like uh, running pipelines, updating a model, or a dashboard, right? When we talk about libraries, uh, these are packages or modules that provide additional functionality for developing uh, various models or different types of analysis, right? So when you think of a traditional IDE environment like um, Visual Studio, they've got libraries that you can add and plugins and things like that. Same kind of deal, right? Uh, tables are where the structured data is stored that you use and your team will use for the analysis that you're running. Um, they can live in uh, cloud storage um, and the cluster that's being used um, can also store them or you can store them in memory for faster processing of the data. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, you determine how you're going to use those uh, tables. The clusters themselves are, you know, essentially a group of computers or compute resources being used for operations like executing the code from the notebooks or libraries. And um, you can also pull in uh, data from raw sources, you know, cloud or structured data, you know, semi-structured data, um, or the data that's in those tables that we just talked about, right? And uh, clusters can be controlled via access policies, right? Uh, and you can limit control to the specific users as needed. You know, so using that same Active Directory in a, um, integration, you can specify what users can do. Uh, the jobs themselves um, are a tool that's used to schedule uh, execution within a cluster, right? So um, these can be notebooks or, or scripts, you know, using Python or jar assemblies. Um, and you can create uh, manual triggers that will that'll send the jobs off or run it through a REST API. And the last component is the apps. Um, when you think about apps, think about the third-party components that can tap into your Databricks cluster, right? So um, some of the best scenarios are visualizing the data through applications like Tableau or Power BI, where you have the ability to um, basically 
consume the models that you've built and the output of uh, the notebook or, or the script that you ran um, to be able to visualize uh, that data. So uh, these are the main components. Uh, you know, in, in future videos, we'll talk more about interoperability and, and how uh, Databricks is used in the industry and uh, how it compares against HD Insight Spark. Uh, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Let us know if you have any questions by clicking the link below, and we're happy to help out. Have a great day.